Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith. I just got back from golfing, guys, and today I wanted to make a video on why did I get into EEG in the first place? What made me become an EEG technologist? Now I was asking myself this this exact same question recently just to think, why did I how did I get here, you know? How did I get here? So, just a little bit of background. So there's a story that I tell people, and then there's the real story. So the easy story to tell people that I have been throughout the hospital and stuff is that, oh yeah, I was taking psychology class and then I wrote a, had to write a research paper. So there's a bunch of options. I said, yep, EEG was one of the options. I picked it and then I wrote a paper on it and then I found out that you could do it for a job. So that's the story that I tell people. And it's true, I did write a research paper involving EEG and psychology class, but that's not the real reason why I decided to become an EEG technologist. But that's a very simple story to tell. Now the real story, of why I became an EEG technologist is because I wanna connect my brain to a computer, like this phone here. Now that just sounds ridiculous. So if you tell anybody that, they're gonna give you a weird look. But I have to stay truthful to my story and maybe some of you guys will think it's interesting because that is a very interesting thing. Who would wanna connect their brain to a computer? What kind of person would wanna do that? Well. Since that's the real truth, uh, I thought I'd look back at my essay that I had to submit in order to get into EEG college, and what did I write? Let's look through my essay that I wrote about two years ago, and maybe a couple months, two years and a few months ago, before I even started EEG school. So there's, this is the real story of why I decided to get into the field of neurodiagnostics. Here's my essay that I wrote at the end of 2019. After a lot of self-reflection, I've decided to go into the field of neurodiagnostic technology and pursue the development of brain-computer interfaces. Some medical applications include treatment of Parkinson's disease, incurable epilepsy, allowing locked-in ALS patients to control a computer cursor with their thoughts, control prosthetic limbs, and artificial senses such as the cochlear implant and vision implants. Brain-computer interfaces are in their infancy as a technology and will become more widely used as computers become smaller and more powerful. There are two main steps in brain-computer interfaces. Step one is to record the electrical activity in the brain. Electrical activity occurs in the brain through alpha, beta, theta, and delta waves. These brain spikes are recorded using EEG, which is done through the non-invasive placement of electrodes on the head, or electrocortography, which involves a neurosurgeon placing electrodes directly on the brain. The next step in a medical brain-computer interface is neuromodulation, which involves sending electrical activity into the brain. With a brain-computer interface, a neurologist is able to normalize or modulate the pathological neuronal spikes. For example, Parkinson's disease can cause uncontrollable shaking of the hands, which can be stopped with deep brain stimulation from electrodes implanted by a neurosurgeon. Similar implanted electrodes can also treat epilepsy that is unable to be managed effectively with medications. These electrodes continuously monitor the patient's brain activity similar to an EEG and deliver electrical stimulation to the site of the individual seizures only when the recorded brain activity suggests a seizure may be beginning. A simple way to think about these brain-computer interfaces are essentially as pacemakers for the brain instead of the heart. I believe that the brain is the most important organ in the human body. Another person who had a brain-centric view of the world was Thomas Edison, who said the chief function of the body is to carry the brain around. This is why I've decided to become a registered EEG technologist to learn the language of the brain's neuronal spikes and en engineer novel brain-computer interfaces. Hopefully after reading my essay, you guys have a 100% clear understanding of why I really got into the field of EEG and decided to become an EEG technologist. A lot of people in our field, they have some connection to epilepsy since that's what an EEG is best for, people who have seizures or epilepsy. Uh, but in my case, it tended to be from the fact that I wanna connect my brain to a computer. Very interesting. But connecting your brain to a computer isn't a very uh, practical thing in the short term, so, in the short term, I am uh, helping out epilepsy patients by doing EEGs and creating EEG software to help detect and find out where exactly in the brain the seizures are starting so the doctor can help treat their seizures. Now, that's my short-term goal, but my long-term goal is to connect my brain to a computer in all honesty. Uh, I hope you guys find that interesting. If not, Oh well, but if so, make sure you hit the like button. I love you guys. Make sure to leave in the comments below. What do you guys want to see next? Because I know one of you guys suggested I make this video. Jared, why did you get into the field of EEG?
Oh, yikes. Look at that. It almost crashed. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the video, guys. They're over there yelling at each other. I'll see you guys later.